Strap footing is a very important structural element and very useful in some situations. But what exactly is a strap footing and where do you use it? And how do you calculate the bearing pressures? This is Javier Encinas and today we're going to answer all these questions about strap footings and we're going to discuss the most important details in the design of this structural system. Let's get started. A strap footing usually supports two columns, so it's a special type of a combined footing. If there's a property line close by the edge of an exterior column, a normal isolated footing would be placed eccentrically under this column and it would tend to tilt and overturn. This problem can be prevented by connecting this footing with the adjacent interior footing by a concrete strap beam. Therefore, a strap footing is a system consisting of two spread footings tied together by a strap beam, as shown here. The use of a strap footing may be justifiable where the distance between columns is large and a normal combined footing would be impractical due to required large excavation. In those cases, it's more economical to design two spread footings tied together by a strap beam. One important step in the design of a strap footing is the calculation of the bearing pressures under the two footings. In the design of a strap footing, the system is assumed infinitely rigid and acts as a unit, so that the longitudinal bending moments are resisted entirely by the strap beam. The calculation of the bearing pressures implies the calculation of the reaction at the center of the footing. Since the locations of the reactions are known, the calculation of the forces is very simple. Just by taking moments about the other footing, you can calculate the reaction very easily. Even if there's an eccentricity between the applied loads and the reactions, as shown here, the footing cannot rotate because the beam is restraining that rotation. Therefore, the system actually works as a unit and some loads may be transferred from one footing to the other. For example, the exterior applied load could be different to the exterior reaction and the interior applied load could be different to the interior reaction. As a result, since the reactions are applied at the center of the footings, the bearing pressures are uniformly distributed as shown here. The bearing pressure under the beam is ignored conservatively in the analysis. Once the surface reactions are calculated, the two footings may be sized so that the resulting bearing pressures are under the allowable limits established by the soldier report. Since the bearing pressures are uniform, the design of the footings is relatively simple, but the design of the strap beam is more complex since it implies the calculation of the shear and bending moment diagrams. This task may be time consuming. To illustrate the design of a strap footing and particularly the calculation of the bearing pressures, I have prepared an example in as deep foundation the distance between columns is 18 feet. This is the exterior footing. Typically, this footing is rectangular to minimize the eccentricity between the applied load and the center of the footing where the reaction is applied. In this case, it's 7.33 by 4.5 feet. The interior footing is 6.67 feet square. Let's go to the loads tab. I have entered some loads already. The applied service loads are vertical, 50 kips in the exterior column and 80 kips in the interior column. Some moments, 10 kips and 20 kips, and shear forces also, 5 kips and 8 kips. With this information, the program can calculate the bearing pressures because they are based on the service loads. As explained before, the reaction is assumed to be applied at the center of the footing in both cases, so the bearing pressure diagram is rectangular, 2.3 KSF and 2.1 KSF. The bearing under the beam is ignored in this analysis. Let's go to the at a glance tab. This shows a summary of the results. Let's go to the soil bearing pressures. The level bearing pressure is 3.6 and the exterior footing pressure is 2.3. So there's a room for improvement here. Maybe we can reduce the size of the footings to go closer to the allowable bearing pressure. And that will be part of the optimization of the design. Likewise, if we see the other ratios for the rebars, we can see that the design is very comfortable. But in this case, we are focusing our attention on the soil bearing pressures. If we go back to the geometry tab, we can reduce the size. And we can reduce the, the footing width instead of 7.33, let's say 6 feet. And then the pressure now is 2.7. Likewise, for the interior footing, we can uh, go to 6 by 6.
and then the pressure is 2.4 versus 3.6 so we already optimized the size of the footings a little bit as you can see it's very easy to design a strap footing using as deep foundation particularly the calculation of the bearing pressures likewise it's easy to optimize the design by reducing the size of the footings so that the resulting pressures are close to the allowable bearing pressures with this we conclude the presentation on the design of strap footing particularly the calculation of the soil bearing pressures please subscribe to the channel if you want to receive notifications in the future for similar videos thank you for your attention